Hi, my name is Randy Kelly. I'm a fire captain with the Menlo Park Fire District in the San Francisco Bay Area. Um, we're here completing final inspections on six engines um, right behind us. Um, we serve approximately a, just about 100,000 people. Uh, we serve the communities of Menlo Park, Atherton, East Palo Alto, and unincorporated San Mateo County. Well, so behind me is one of our uh, one of our six engines that uh, we're completing final inspections on. These are our Aero XT chassis. Uh, this will standardize our operations for uh, st standardize our operations, training, and safety, and uh, our mechanical side too. Okay, so let's go take a look at the rig. So, uh, starting off here in the cab, uh, on all of our cabs now we put um, stirrup steps. So. It's kind of an ergonomic thing for us. So uh, we, as part of our plan to reduce slips, trips, and falls, um, we added steps to everything. And then once we get inside, pretty normal cab. We use, the, um, we use the command zone. And one of the new things we added on this is the FRC 360 uh, camera system. So now the operator, when driving down the road, has the ability to get a better situational awareness of the vehicles around them. Um, with the hope that we reduce accidents. <laughs> Moving on. Just a small access door for um, accessing the rear of the cab so the uh, pump operator can grab their helmet and their coat. And um, from there, moving into the back. This is our uh, rider's compartment. We have seating in the back for three personnel. Um, we've removed all the SCBAs out as part of our exposure reduction plan. We put them in the side. Um, in the back, we also have overhead storage and um, space that we use to carry our body armor for uh, violent intruder incidents. And then um, we try to keep also space because we are on the West Coast and we do get uh, respond to vegetation fires. We got to keep our wildland gear in the back here. Um, as I said earlier, ergonomics and, uh, are a big thing to us. So uh, when we were using our, designing our pump panels and our cross lay trays, one of the things that was important is we want to, if we don't have to have people climb up onto the, uh, onto the engine, we want to reduce that. So we added a, uh, the quick draw um, cross lay cover so now we can access, open them up from the street rather than having to flip uh, the cover up onto the top. Moving down the side, this is our uh, engineer's compartment. So uh, engineer keeps their breathing apparatus, coat and helmet in here. And during pumping operations, we consolidated all the fittings into these three drawers. Uh, we've been really happy with this model. Um, and it's the engine, we, when we were designing this, we sought input from all of our engineers in the department. and. Um, so this was mainly their idea and we just put it together. What we're doing now is we like to separate our def from our uh, fuel just to make sure that we don't have an accident, uh, we don't put def in the wrong contain in the wrong spot. Above we added tool boards and this is just to maximize our storage. We get three times as much storage with the tool boards in here. Been really happy with these and it allows us to consolidate our tools rather than when we pull up at a fire and running around the rig to go do a treasure hunt to find all the tools we need. Coming around the back of the fire engine is uh, we added a lot, we've added in these newer builds uh, a lot of we've improved our lighting. Uh, we when we catch medical calls a lot of times we train um, we'll treat people on the back of the engine so we put on a work light uh, so that when we're attending to a patient on the tailboard uh, we have good lighting at night. Another thing we did that um, for our guys and girls at home is uh, rather than climbing up top and raising the hose bed covers, we now have automated. What this allows us to do is raise the hose bed covers from here rather than standing on a narrow step six feet above the ground. Um, these, have been a, these have been well received and um, we think it was a good move for us. We also added lighting inside 
So when we're working at night, we're able to, um, we have good lighting up there. This is our EMS compartment. Um, we provide first responder ALS service uh, to our community served. And so what we did with these newer engines, we consolidated all of our equipment to this one space, tried to get it away from the exhaust uh, so we're not standing in the flow of the exhaust pipe uh, when we're grabbing the medical gear. And so what this, this stores everything, we have power to this uh, to charge some of our uh, various pieces of equipment such as the suction and the um, defibrillator and things like that. Moving down the side here, um, I want, this is a, we just keep a breathing apparatus in here. This is where the rider keeps uh, their breathing apparatus. Something I want to point out to you is we went away from telescoping lights on our engines and we went to fixed uh, strip lights on all, the, on all three out of the four sides of these. These provide amazing scene lighting. Uh, they, don't, they don't move so you can't break them. And uh, we've been really happy with the lighting solution. More uh, bottle and fire extinguisher storage on this side. This is the, uh, what we call the officer's compartment and the officer's SCBA uh, turnouts and a couple of tools are all stored in here. And when we were designing these, as I said earlier, is we didn't want to do a trip. We don't, when we pull up at a call, we don't want to have to go to three different spots to gather all of our equipment. So the tools that the officer uh, uses most are all located in this uh, compartment. So it's more of a one-stop shop for us. Coming down the side here, just the other side of the pump panel. Um, a new ad for us is booster reels. We went away from them in the, uh, in the 90s and they've come back now. They're really, they're really good for us for refuse fires and uh, small vegetation fires. Um, and that's, uh, we're hoping that we're hoping that it's gonna it's gonna turn out to be a good ad for us, and that we'll end up retrofitting some of our older equipment with it. So these are our steps that we added uh, on the new engines. They're a nice addition for us. Now, get it, to make it, it gives a good stepping surface when we're reloading our hose trays um, or passing down equipment from the top. Some other items that. What we do that we've copied it from other agencies is we put our water line sight gauges on the sides of the, the cab. So when you're, when you're away from the engine and you're uh, doing like wildland firefighting, like progressive hose lays, things like that, you, you're able to see how much water we have available to us and if we might be running out. Right next to it is part of the FRC 360 camera system. As I said earlier, what the FRC camera system does is it stitches together uh, a picture from four sides of the apparatus looking down and it gives us 360 awareness of where we're going. Here in the officer's area is um, we try and keep it pretty open. Uh, when these go in service, they'll have, um, we use a, um, an iPad for our MDT for um, routing, uh, communications, and that's mounted just above the dash. So uh, we pre-wired uh, charging ports and everything for those. It's turned out to be a, a, a good fit for us where it's not too crowded up there. Just below here, we have a, a, some of the guys found some open space. So we just added a small compartment underneath there. And that just carries, um, that we usually just carry uh, like smoke, spare smoke detectors and pub ed. Uh, how bad things that we give out to the community. So coming around to the front, this was something that our guys found um, and they really like the idea of is putting the, putting the number into the grill. Um, our companies have a lot of pride and uh, they want to show it off who, uh, what firehouse they're coming from. And it's also, it's a nice, it makes it a lot easier uh, to identify the rig from further out. Something that's kind of unique to California is the three letter fire scope designator. We put these on. Uh, this helps for identification of the agency at um, 
large scale incidents where we respond out of the out of our area. Okay, well that concludes our tour of our new engine. And um, before we go, I want to thank our fire board of directors for supporting these purchases um, and allowing us to standardize our fleet and set us up for the next 10 to 15 years. I want to thank former fire chief Harold Schappelhelm and our current fire chief Mark Lorenzen. And I also want to thank uh, our apparatus committee and all the Menlo Park firefighters that helped put this, uh, help give us the ideas to put these rigs together. So um, thank you and stay safe.